All right, so it's it's early in the morning here, and uh, we're gonna take some of our chickens in to uh, to get processed. So um, I've talked about this before, but we have kind of a uh, on a staggered system throughout the year where we uh, take chickens in every couple months to be processed for meat. Um, so it gives them some time to lay some eggs for us. Uh, usually about a month or two of egg laying gets them nice and, and bulky and fat and then we take them in and get them processed. In the meantime we're raising up new baby chicks uh, from the eggs that hatched uh, in those couple months. Uh, we'll, we'll raise up some new baby chicks and so we'll keep doing that. So we have kind of this um, continual sustainable operation going where we have a constant supply of eggs and meat. So that's the idea anyway. Um, and so I've separated out the, the chickens. I put them into a, a, a little stall here. Um, they have to have no food for like 16 hours or so uh, before you take them in to get processed. Now we don't process any of our own chickens here right now, especially in the winter time. Um, in the summertime or spring and summertime next year, I probably will do that. I'm going to set up a uh, space to do that um, so, I, so I can just process my own chickens every two months um, instead of taking them in and paying, you know, the $4 or whatever it costs to get them processed. So, um, so let's go ahead and grab some chickens here. I won't show you outside putting them in the truck just because it's dark outside. Uh, you won't be able to see much out there. Uh, but basically, I just have a dog crate in the back of my truck. So I'll take the chickens out of here. I try not to... I try to be as gentle as possible with them because I don't want to ruffle them up and make them all nervous. Uh, so we'll take them and, and put them in the dog crate and then we'll zip down to the processing facility and, and drop them off for the day. chickens between 7 and 8 o'clock. I'm still five minutes away. Oh, we got lots of chickens coming in today. Let's see how these guys did. good it's always kind of it's always kind of sad dropping them off there for some reason I don't know why it's uh, part of uh, part of what we do you know I know a lot of people when I when I talk about processing animals and stuff like that you know some people that don't eat meat I guess you know get upset about it or um, I don't know it, it bothers them but uh, this is this is part of life and part of farm for sure. Um, these animals uh, have had a good life. They've um, been raised, you know, with a nice open pasture and a comfortable place to live. And um, so, you know, I'm, I'm always very comfortable uh, taking them in and, and they provide uh, good food for us. So now we just have to wait until uh, between 4.30 and 6 o'clock today. That's when uh, you do pick up. Um, so they'll... Uh, We'll go back and, and pick the birds up at that point and, and they'll come out ready to be thrown in the freezer. Um, and they're, uh, they're good. These barred rocks have been good, uh, good meat for us. We, this is the second batch we've taken in this year. And um, the first batch we almost went through, I think we had 12 or 13 that we took in. Um, and they were good. They're very good. They're a good size too, about four pounds. So, um, you know, it was a, they were, they were good, uh, good little meat birds. Well, due to a kind of a family situation, we weren't able to pick up the birds last night. So uh, I'm out here today, uh, the next day actually in the morning, and uh, uh, they came out to, to meet us here. Uh, kind of a special trip. They held them overnight for us, and so we're here to here to pick up the birds. So let's see what we get. How much these these hens and a couple roosters uh, will end up weighing. I'm I'm, a, I'm thinking that the hens are going to be pretty light, but we'll see. All right. Well, some of these hens are pretty small. 
almost three pounds. Most of them are right around three pounds, it looks like. There was one of the roosters there. So they were, um, I've had a few of the roosters, the Bard Rock roosters be over four pounds. Uh, that's a pretty pretty good size, uh, good size chicken there. But uh, definitely, definitely smaller on these hens. So uh, these all, these are turning out really good and this is nice, nice tender meat. So let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at the rest of the flock. I've put them all together now, so um, we have uh, all of our chickens in one area for the winter time, and I'll separate them back out uh, in the springtime. But uh, for ease of feeding and watering and all that kind of stuff, I've, I've put them all together. So let's take a look at them and take a look at some of our baby chicks that we just hatched, um, so you can kind of see the process at every step of the way. So this is the the main flock, and you'll see uh, several different size birds in here. These guys here, these barred rocks right in front of us, these are all the chicks. Actually, these are the uh, the ones that we got from McMurray Hatchery online. Um, did a video on these guys, and then we got the one, the exotic, which I think is a Americana. Um, it looks like it might end up being a rooster. I don't know. It's pretty big. All the chickens in here that are not barred rocks were given to us. Uh, several families have uh, moved or have been in situations where they couldn't couldn't uh, have the uh, the chickens, and so they uh, they gave them to us to uh, to to have. So some of them are older, and I won't I probably won't take them in to get processed. They'll they'll die of natural uh, natural age. Um, but uh, this is this is where where they all hang out. We've got a couple roosters in here. This is Johnny. He's uh, this is the one of the ones that was out in our uh, breeding coop. So he's kind of the the father of most all of these barred rocks that are in here that we have hatched ourselves. Um, and then there are a few other roosters. There's this little guy. I think it's a New Hampshire. He was given to us. Um, and then there's a, uh, a Rhode Island Red rooster running around here somewhere, probably outside. The ones that we, the only ones that we want to have here are the barred rocks. They're the ones that we really like the best and uh, the ones that we'll continue to use for this kind of dual purpose breeding. <laughs> They're very docile. You can see one of the Rhode Islands over there picking on everybody. Um, the, the barred rocks are very friendly. They don't really pick on, you know, the other chickens. There's not a lot of fighting and problems and things like that. So. We really, really do like these uh, these guys. Um, a couple of them have gotten into some bad habits of laying here. I'll have to correct. <laughs> I've got a couple of eggs on the floor here. I've been finding every day, so um, I have to use some of my tricks to get them to lay in the, uh, the nesting boxes. But but the, the nesting boxes that we built have been working really well, and uh, plenty of nesting boxes in here for probably 60 or 70 chickens. And the automatic feeder's been working pretty good uh, as well, so I've been happy with that. So this is where we'll be keeping all of our chickens throughout the winter time. Uh, they'll all stay in here, that way it'll be easy for me to feed and water them uh, all together. And then we'll separate out a, you know, pick the best barred rocks, maybe 10 of them, to uh, go with Johnny, our, our rooster, and he'll, um, and then there'll be the, the breeding coop. So right now, any eggs that we hatch out are gonna be any combination of Americanas, Bard Rocks, Isa Browns, Buff Warpingtons, Rhode Island Reds, and most of them will be mixed with a Rhode Island Red or a uh, Bard Rock Rooster. So um, that's basically uh, what we're getting right now. And we're fine with any of those mixes. They're all gonna be mainly for meat anyway, and those are all good kind of dual purpose breeds. So for those of you who've been uh, following along and you've seen the video I did on the uh, McMurray hatchery order that we placed. We ordered 20 chicks online. It was our first time ordering online. Um, any baby chicks, we've hashed out all of our own or bought them from local places in the, in the past. And I had kind of a bad experience. Box came torn open. There were missing chicks that had fallen out during delivery. And, you know, it was just it was kind of a bad deal. We, we weren't real happy with it. And I did a video about that. And, uh, you know, I, overwhelmingly people commented on that video saying, that it was not McMurray Hatchery's fault. I can't believe you, you know, talked bad about them. Some people said, you know, I'm unsubscribing. <laughs> they're, they're, people are all upset. And I, I get it, I get it. The post office was at fault for, um, for that shipping problem. Um, but I will say this, if you haven't watched the video, I'll put a link to it uh, up here in the, in, the, in the card system. But when you're a business and you are shipping a product to somebody, 
for instance, we shipped maple syrup to people this year. It was our first year doing this. People received some broken bottles of maple syrup and guess who they were very upset with? They were upset with us as the shipper for not packaging them well enough to get them to their destination unharmed. And rightfully so, it was our responsibility to make sure that they arrive there and uh, in, in good condition, knowing full well that the post office and UPS and any of those mail delivery places, they treat packages very roughly. And we know this, um, everyone knows this. And so you have to package products well. So we learned to, that we needed to really beef up our packaging and do a much better job packaging our maple syrup. Um, if you were one of the people that received a broken bottle of maple syrup this year, I'm really sorry. We, that was our fault. We refunded people in full. You know, it was, it was our, um, our responsibility. I, I hold McMurray to that same standard. If they are sending chicks in the mail in cheap, flimsy cardboard boxes that are falling apart, knowing full well the post office is going to beat them up, they need better packaging. And that was my point um, in holding them responsible for that. Yes, the post office is the one that damaged the box, but... McMurray is ultimately responsible for getting those that product to me safely and unharmed. Now they did hold true and they did refund me on any of the birds that were missing or dead um, or that died within three days. That's their policy. And they were very nice about it. And I have no problem with that. I just, uh, people were, were all in an uproar about it. And I wanted to clarify that, um, that stance. So with that being said, let me take you in the garage and just show you our, our baby chicks uh, that we just hatched out. These are the mixed breed. So they're kind of the, 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 the mutts. They're, they're who knows what came out of there. And uh, it was a lot of fun to watch them hatch, all different colors and stuff. So, so let's check those out and just kind of show you where the whole operation starts in the uh, cycle that we have here. All right, and here in the corner of our garage, we have our almost two-week-old mutts. These are uh, the mixes of uh, whatever we uh, whatever was in the coop there. A um, couple that are barred rocks for sure, one that might be a black star, and then the two yellow ones are some type of a cross between a, probably a buff orpington and a barred rock or a, uh, maybe a Rhode Island and an isa or something like that. So, so it was a pretty small hatch out uh, this time, just six of them. Uh, one of them had an injured leg and uh, that we, we actually have it separated. But these guys will, uh, they stay in the house usually for a week or two. Just uh, we have a little cardboard box brooder set up by the incubator. And then once they hatch out, we'll keep them there, keep an eye on them real close and keep them nice and warm. And then they'll move out here into the garage. So one of the things that I just put in here, it's a little temperature sensor. It's a Wi-Fi uh, temperature and humidity sensor. Um, so I just hung it right on the back of the brooder box there. Um, and this works through an app um, and over the wireless network. And so it'll tell me the temperature in here i can check at any time and it'll also alert me if the temperature drops below like 70 or 65 degrees or something like that so i'll know if the heat uh the heat lamp bulb burns out um what happens sometimes these bulbs will burn out if it's you know it could be 25 degrees outside it'll get real cold in here and these guys won't make it so so that thing should work real good at uh, notifying me and uh i'll put a link in the description to those but i'll do a, another video on that i'm gonna put those in the greenhouse and we'll do a whole thing on on uh, those wi-fi sensors they're pretty neat but in the end, this is where they all end up. This is actually a, one of those turkeys that we were holding on to for the neighbor. They gave us one of, the, one of them to keep. Um, that was a pretty good deal, I think. We cared for them for a few weeks and took them in to get them processed, and they gave us one. And then we've got all the chickens that are ours in here. Uh, I don't know what this, what this little green thing is on here. On all the new ones I just picked up, they've got this in there. It almost looks like a... I don't know, is it a piece of plastic? Is it a temperature sensor or something? I don't know what it is. Anybody know what that is? Fresh meat raised right here on the farm. Hey there, cookie dough. Look at this cat is getting huge. This guy we found on the side of the road. He's been he's two years old now, I think. So having fresh, uh, having fresh meat was one of the big things that we wanted to accomplish on this farm. Uh, we first moved out here. We wanted to find a way to consistently produce enough uh, meat for ourselves uh, raised right here on the farm. Chicken is one of the things we eat a lot of. And so having a sustainable operation where we can 
raise out our own baby chicks from the chickens we have, grow them out, um, and then you get, get some eggs out of them for a little while and then harvest them for meat. So nothing goes to waste. Chickens aren't just sitting around here, you know, being fed for two or three years after they're done laying. Um, and we have good, you know, young meat that we're able to get, harvest from these guys. So this, this operation really seems to be working well. Um, and it seems to be, to me, the only way you can financially break even or come out ahead on a small scale chicken operation. I mean, unless you go really large scale with egg sales and stuff like that, or just do meat birds and grow them out over a couple months and sell them off, you know, it's really hard to chickens are real low profit margin so um I, i'm not gonna go, go big you know chicken operation here i just i just don't see the margin in it for the amount of care and, and space that you need and all that kind of stuff um I, I would much rather focus more on our larger animals like pigs and then eventually cattle uh, and things like that so um but the chicken operation is working well and of course i'll take you guys along and keep you updated on uh you know how the whole thing is going uh we really like hatching out our own chicks and it's been a lot of fun so i may take you along for the whole you know hatch out process how we how we incubate and how we care for them uh from the moment we collect the eggs to you know the moment we uh we get the, the chicks hatching out so but hopefully you guys like the uh little tour and and uh kind of inside scoop on our little chicken operation the only way we found to, to actually make make it uh, break even here um, and uh, let me know what you guys think let me know what you guys uh, do on your farms or homesteads uh, I'd love to, to hear any advice and uh, any ideas so don't forget to hit thumbs up on the video as always guys and thanks for watching have a good one